all right welcome back time to run the medium anomaly now i'll be using the same akaria as last time uh, with the exact same build now when i recorded uh, this well this medium anomaly uh, you'll see what will happen i mean y you will just see what will happen uh, it's kind of funny but, but yeah uh, this, this is basically one of the solo experiences that you might encounter I would suggest that if you do plan to uh, do these anomalies, get one alt that or a friend doesn't have to be an alt. Doesn't have to be an alt, but basically uh, get a friend or an alt uh, to loot the the wrecks because during one of my runs running the the medium anomalies or in general the anomalies, uh, I actually did find a predator scrambler, but I didn't loot it. Uh, someone else looted who was who was just passing by. So in order not, in, or, in order to prevent things like you know in order to prevent that from happening, definitely get uh, at least one ship that will be responsible for looting because at one point these modules should be quite expensive. So I potentially lost maybe maybe. 20 to 30 billion at least something something like that but yeah uh, definitely do not, do not want to to get your loot stolen you don't want anyone to steal your loot from uh, from you especially since uh, especially when you spent a lot of time running the the anomaly so, uh, <laughs> with that out of the way, let's just let's just go and let's go towards one of my one of my runs. You know, I recorded uh, well, I recorded I done a, a bunch of them, and I was playing out with some uh, with active. different builds for for you know, and as we have all seen last time. The long range approach is definitely, I would say, the best, especially if you are completely solo. Now, since I'm completely solo here, uh, I'm going to be warping at 100 kilometers. I went to the plant and then I'm uh, warping to the um, to the anomaly because if someone was running the anomaly before me, they could potentially draw the ships towards them so always a good idea to warp to a planet and then to warp to the mission that way that way if there were uh, if there was a threat basically to be to be jumped well no, not exactly jumped but it would kind of appear like the drones were camping 100 kilometers from the warping uh, from the center of the map, so in order, not, in order not to experience that, this is how I would suggest that you warp in. Now, the medium anomaly is definitely more serious. Uh, it has battle ships, battle cruisers, cruisers, frigates, and I would say the, the most dangerous ship here. The most dangerous dangerous ships here are the frigates. They can be quite sneaky. They can be very fast. They are very fast. So they are primary targets. They are they're always primary targets, especially if you are a sniper. Now, as you can see, uh, I am doing some good damage to them. A very nice, I mean, very nice range on on the artillery cannons. With this Makari, although the build, as we have seen last time, uh, isn't the the perfect sniper because my rigs are burst adapters, not arm bit extenders, because this Makari is primarily a PvP Makari. Still haven't uh, bought a specialized PvE ship. Not, I don't have a specialized PvE ship over here, but I think I have like. I may have two of them in Deep Null that I occasionally use, but over here in in high sec, in low sec, I only have PvP ships. I can technically 
transform some of my ships into PvE ships, but I would just rather buy a totally new ship and build it, specialize it for PvE. Now, in this encounter here, I don't have a shield booster. This is just to show you how little damage the ships uh, really do and would be a very good example to show you at what distance you are going to take uh, are going to take damage from the battleships. ships. Now the the battle cruisers have about 80 km range, the cruisers 50 to 60 km range. The battleships ships will hit you up until about 120 km. Occasionally they do hit at 130 but at 135 kilometers, basically no damage taken from the battleships. They are also not that fast. The fastest drones are the frigates. That's why the frigates are the prime targets. There are some speedy cruisers, but they're not really that dangerous. You can easily just snipe them down. And they don't really tank a lot of damage since the micro war drive signature radius does make uh, does make them quite a big target and again the micro warp drift does help your cannons to actually hit them better so you can use that uh, for your advantage now speaking of hitting the targets better technically you can use a target painter but the reason why i don't use a target painter uh, is because in the case i crash in the case my internet crashes and if it happens that a frigate or a cruiser does get does get close to me, uh, I can s I can web them, scramble them, and just one shot them because even at like 13 kilometers, 12 kilometers, or even 10 kilometers, the large cannons, if the target is webbed down enough, the large artillery cannons will hit. Basically, the webs and scrambler in this case are uh, for defense. Now as you can see I'm taking some damage, uh, but it, it's nothing serious, uh, nothing too, you know, spectacular, just scratching your surface bit by bit. I have no booster, so uh, I'll be showing that they're not doing much damage at this distance. A navy battleship would tank this much better, since the navy battleships have much more, you know, they have much more tank. and. You can technically uh, add one of the new shield generators, although this is where things get a bit weird. Uh, the new shield generator, the new extended basically, uh, I believe that they will be buffed a lot uh, since right now they do give a, uh, an, okay, I mean, an okay amount of passive boost, but not really, you know, nothing spectacular. Uh, but with the balance patch that should happen sometime in September, I do expect the shield shield generators to be. I do, do expect the generators to be We're to be drastically buffed. Uh, hopefully, like maybe a fifty percent boost in passive shield regeneration. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, so, if that w if that's the case, then the long-range PVE or PVP build uh, would definitely change a lot. Even the even the PVP builds would definitely change, since I would be using extender plus generator. Basically, that combination. Since the more shield you have, the more effect you will also receive from the generator. So. That's one of the things that I want to play around with. Of course, in order to play around with that, they actually have to buff them, so... So, still waiting on more details on the... on the September balance patch. Now, the trick that I was talking about uh, in the last video, you can basically height them even if you don't have like 250 km range you can hold 
the the aggro basically of the closest ship which usually the closest ship to you is the one that's usually doing the most damage to you the fastest battleship usually the battleship that does the most damage to your ship and usually that is the elite so the ships are war back to zero on the anomaly if you are above 250 kilometers from the center and they basically stop chasing you after that distance but you can technically hold them at 250 basically plus minus one kilometer you go close to them when they are about to warp off they accrue you they start approaching you then you go back to 251 kilometers away from the mission and then they de and basically are attempting to warp back now the battleships this is how you can kill the battleships if the battleships are causing a an issue you can use this trick to uh, separate them from the main group and basically 1v1 them which does work really well and you can tank one of these ships quite easily at this distance the the main thing is to keep them uh, at a hundred plus kilometers away from you and also you have to make sure that you don't let them work back now the battleships are slow the drone battleships are are very very slow so when you go above 250 when you go above 250 kilometers uh, from the mission or from the anomaly they can't immediately warp back to zero they it, it takes them about 30 seconds to do so so that basically buys you enough time to to go plus one minus one kilometer basically keep them there pinned they will not shoot at you they will not do much damage they will lock you on they'll basically attempt to lock you on and aggro you but you can technically keep them at that the razor's edge if you wanna call it like that because that's how it feels like to be honest and you can just kill them uh, without worrying about anything it does require some manual piloting it requires active play but it, it is doable it is entirely doable solo it is completely doable solo and as you can see me without a tank I'm, I'm clearing this without a problem so yeah a very interesting little tactic uh, that came it just kind of popped in my mind I just thought well let me just see if this works and then I played around with the warping a couple times and then I figured out that you can just keep them at that at that one kilo you can you can just keep them at, at that one kilometer without a problem uh, so if tank is a problem then this is one of the ways on how to eliminate the most dangerous ship and then after you kill them you just approach you just approach to towards the center of the anomaly they start to aggro you and then you shoot the closest ship and then if necessary you just repeat the cycle overall i love this idea I don't know if I talked about it before. I know I talked about a lot of things. Uh, I I covered everything. I think well, not exactly everything, but I have like over a thousand videos in this game. So I I I think I'm f fairly sure that I've covered a lot of things. But but I have no idea if I ever covered uh, this tactic. It is a tactic for uh, for snipers basically. No, my internet uh, is horrible, and you might see some very weird lag here and there. That's just my internet. Uh, today has been a very, very, very bad day for my internet, since it's been lagging since I've ever. S it's been lagging since I've installed the patch, basically. So it even been lagging before that. So it's the whole day has been like that. So in in my case it's a little bit risky to um, uh, to run this with this ship since if i lose internet and if i can't log back in i'm in trouble and th this is also where the long range where this little tactic can be very helpful since your ship can basically travel above 250 plus kilometers and 
then the Argon will stop. So even if your ship doesn't warp from the mission, the pirate ships, the, the drones will stop chasing you. I'm at 77% shield, shooting at the battle cruiser. And as we can see, I'm trying to draw b draw them towards me, to follow me. I actually wanted to bring my alt to loot the wreck because I definitely don't want to get my loot stolen again. But yeah, this is perhaps I I forgot which uh, which which medium anomaly this is in a row. I I think I've done like four before recording this. I have no idea. I I have no idea when uh which one it is on the on the list, but I I've done quite a bit of them and and this one I I decided to put this one in mostly because in the previous ones I used a booster and the And it kind of didn't really show what I was talking about uh, in terms of the damage that that they were doing to me. But as you can see, like very little damage, nothing, nothing, you know, nothing spectacular. And I'm slowly killing them one by one, sniping them away. But also thinking about, I mean. What are what would be the the other ways to basically improve the range? You can technically use four tracking computers, and I, and I thought about that. Thought about basically going all tracking computers and and literally have having like no uh, no tank, but more than four modules is basically like four modules of the same type is the limit. The fifth module is basically going to have no effect to uh, to boost anything. It will have the the smallest effect, which is literally like non, uh, it, it's not going to make any difference. So four tracking computers and maybe a booster, and that kind of builds will definitely be uh, very nice. However, I, I did find that one gyro stabilizer with the barrage implant quite useful since it did improve the rate of fire and it improved the DPS now obviously not actively using it I, I use it just to quickly burn down a ship or to kill the elite frigates the the barrage implant does work but you know I am using it wisely it's on certain targets the Shiro Stabilizer also does get the job done real well. So in the end I think a build like this is kind of the overall optimal build. Of course, not with the damage at all, but with a armor repair or even with a shield booster. Technically you can use a thermal circulation implant on the Macarial to enhance the tank a little bit. But if you have a barrage implant or if you have a sniper implant, and you know, that's obviously the obviously the, the better choice, since it is going to make the clear time faster. Now, as I mentioned before, while running the while you run these anomalies, you want to have someone that will loot the wrecks. Preferably a interceptor that will make a bookmark far away from the from the ships and just warp to the wreck and warp out. Since again you don't want to get your Predator Scrambler stolen like it happened to me. So I mean at the moment you know the the market price on these modules isn't isn't anything impressive, but these modules are some of the more most expensive modules to date, and this is the second time that they have been available since release. The last time they have been available to be found in open space was three years ago on the Halloween event. 
So this is technically a uh, a Halloween type event, which I'm very glad that they made. Very happy that uh, we do get you know actual stuff to do now. It is difficult though. I I'll admit it is difficult. It is challenging, but it is fun. And if I mean it is definitely kind of also meant to be fun for the whole corporation. It is meant to be. Uh, done with your friends, which honestly is nothing, nothing bad since Eve isn't meant to be played solo. Uh, this is not a solo game. You can play solo if you like, but you have, you know, some limits. Doesn't mean that you can't do anything solo. Uh, you can do stuff that's meant for a fleet if you're solo, just like I'm doing it right now. Easily going through the ships without much of a... without much of a problem, honestly. Just playing a bit cautiously because of my bad internet. I'm mostly worried about my internet. Uh, I'm not really worried about uh, up the ships. I'm, I'm worried about losing internet while, uh, while approaching or basically losing internet while fighting. That's the worst case scenario, basically. Okay, that is that battleship is about to get destroyed, so I can approach. Okay, let's approach. Micro warp drive on. It is also going to be the the ship is basically capacity stable with a micro warp drive. Since you won't be using the um, the booster all the time. Basically, just just boost the shield when required, and the natural capacity recharge will uh, will just do the rests without a problem. All right, we are still. Th this is the yeah. This this wave is slowly going down. There's some battleships to be to be cleared. I am doing uh, the... How should, how should I call this little tactic that I'm using? The draw tactic? I, I don't know. I haven't really called a name for it. I haven't really made a name for it. Although I have to say it's uh, it's interesting. Very good practice. Very good practice for PvP as well. The neutralizer that they're using isn't going to have any effect at this distance, so the... The capacitor is going to be in a very good shape. Everything is basically going to be in a very good shape without much of a problem. I, I feel like I'm, I missed... What ship did I forgot to mention? I really feel like I forgot to mention a ship. I think, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the Ashimu might also be a very good choice for this. Basically, infinite capacitor on the Ashimu. That's also a very awesome ship for the job. A kite long range Ashimu might be. Oh, I know, a Balgorn. Yeah, that's uh, what, uh, what I was uh, trying to remember. A, a Balgorn can technically be uh, very good for this job. A long range beam laser Balgorn. Now, I, I always thought and I still feel like the Balgorn with beam lasers is a little bit cursed. But in this case, it might actually be a pretty solid ship. We are under attack. Or even the Armageddon. Uh, that thing is also really awesome with drones. I mean, th these normals definitely uh, do have... They, c they can make some of the less used ships a lot more important. So... I might be playing around with that uh, in a different video. Only because I'm very curious to see uh, what other ships can do, uh, can easily do this. Now, I used to build ships that were really expensive. Now, as you can see, I, I, I'm trying to get away with the cheapest possible build, po uh, with the cheapest possible build. So, if I do decide, if I do find a ship that's quite suitable for this job, I'm not going to make it ridiculously expensive or anything like that. I'm, I'm going to try to make it as cheap as possible 
uh, but as effective as possible. Uh, that's uh, what I have been doing for a while now lately, and I honestly enjoy that a lot more than just making something that that costs like seven kidneys and eight livers. I mean, I I can do that easily, but I kind of enjoy more to. I kind of really enjoy the the cheaper builds a lot more. It it makes the game a lot more exciting, at least for me, to get away with a very cheap ship running something that's that's quite dangerous. So, if I do find a ship that's really suitable for the job, and I already have a couple of them in mind, I think I, I thought about the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom has an awesome shield tank, and and I think that ship can. Can run, can run these uh, anomalies easily, and then there is the Abaddon, which has an amazing. Th that thing has an awesome range. The the long range kite Abaddon is isn't something new. I have seen some of these ships in action. I have seen a full on DPS Abaddon in action. These things are awesome, uh, and they're surprisingly fast. So. The Abaddon also looks like a very attractive ship for this job. It also has amazing armor resistances. Then there is the Rock, which is, is a shield tank. There is the Megatron Striker as well, which also has an awesome, awesome DP. I think the Megatron Striker can... Actually, you, you know what? I can use the Thermocycleation on the Megaton Striker easily and that thing slaps I already have oh I think I found a new okay then I think I have a I think I have a new idea for some of the yeah I think I have a new idea for the next video will be a long range Megaton Striker the speed might be a problem but I think I'll be able to pull it off we will see uh, for now for the Macario seems to be the way to go, but if I can get the railguns to have more range than than the um, artillery cannons, then that's going to be fun. And this is where uh, things again uh, went. Yeah, you know what's about to happen. So. A inter a cargo atom interceptor came to steal some loot. Okay, fair enough. Now, in this case, you could try to you know compete and try to steal the try try to loot the wrecks before they loot. But I I really wish that the game had implemented the same loot thing from Evil Nine. Basically, if you steal someone's wrecks in Evil line, they can kill you. In this game, the wrecks are basically free for all, which you know kind of makes more sense, I guess. But, but yeah, I kind of wish that the evil line thing was implemented in this game, so that I'm, so that I would be able to just one shot this interest. But at the moment, uh, yeah, not going to make any sense to continue running this normally since that interceptor will just get all the wrecks and when this happens I would say that the best thing to do when this happens if you're com if you're completely solo just just leave the anomaly because they will not be able to clear anything they they will have to basically warp out because uh, when you warp out they the, the drones the drone ships will start shooting them uh, and if they're stationary, they get yeeted. So that's one way how to deal with them. But the best thing just to do is just warp out uh, because they will just eat all of your loot. And this this happens. I mean, before this happens, like I I already like lost a Predator Scrammer that I found the same way actually. Th I, I cleared the anomaly. I was looting. And the interceptor basically came in and took the took the wreck. Not this interceptor, but was a different one. 
it was a different pilot. And to be honest, it, it's a very interesting. I mean, it's definitely a valid thing to to warp around and to steal loot. I can see that being quite profitable in the future. So, if you want to do that, you can do that easily. Uh, it's Eve, after all. One of the ways how to get ISK is is this. So I I can't really be mad at them because they're just trying to make ISK like anyone else. So, so yeah. But. No, it might be wondering, wh where is my alt? My alt, well, <laughs> my alt almost got got yeeted. I, I wasn't really able to uh, to do what I was, uh, what I planned to do. So that kind of sucked. But in any case, I think I'll be warping out from this novel. Uh, not because I can't clear it. Uh, I'm basically close to finishing it. But yeah, there we go. Interceptor went, and they are looting Rex. I'm just going to, uh, yeah. Let's just. I think it will be time to just warp out. Uh, to la to lower the chances of something expensive dropping, I'll just warp out. Since if I continue clearing it, it can it a new module can drop, and yeah, I I would I lose a second scrambler or you know could be something else. In any case, uh, this is basically how um, you can easily solo these anomalies with a battleship. Uh, so far, the long range approach seems to be the way to go. Personally, enjoyed it quite a bit, and we'll definitely be playing around uh, with different ships uh, when I come back in the next video. So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, Stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.